All right, hi everybody, welcome back to the channel, it's Brick Galaxy, and today we're going to be looking at one of the LEGO DC sets based off the upcoming The Batman film releasing on 4th March. This is set 76181, Batmobile The Penguin Chase. Now this set has a total piece count of 392, and it retails for 29.99, or if you're in Malaysia just like I am, it retails for about 139 ringgit and 90 cents. But I managed to get this online for 115 ringgit, which is about $27.50. Now when this set was first revealed back in October, I really liked it. And I thought to myself, this was going to be a day one pickup over the smaller set and the Batcave. Uh, however, after I was done building this, I honestly gotta say I'm slightly disappointed with how the set turned out. And I'll explain why in the video. But first, let's take a closer look at the minifigures first before we move on to the Batmobile itself. Now first off, we have Oswald Cobblepot, aka the Penguin, who will be played by Colin Farrell in the Batman film. Now Penguin is exclusive to this set, so if you really like this interpretation of the Penguin, or if you like, or you're a fan of Colin Farrell, this will be the only set you can get him, unless of course you brickling the figure itself. Now the Penguin has pretty good torso printing, with the black outer jacket on the outside, and on the inside you have a pink shirt, a purple tie with some additional details printed of it, some nice details on the tie itself, and you have a printed purple pinstripe suit, that's a mouthful, uh, which I think looks really good and really befitting of the Penguin since he's often depicted in the comics with some element of purple color and pinstripe pants. So I think this goes really well. Lego did a good job with the face printing. I think it represents Colin Farrell really well, especially with the angry face printing, which I have shown right now. And he does come with an alternate face printing. I'll just show it to you guys where he's giving a slight smirk or smile, I guess, uh, as usual, a penguin, a penguin thing to do. Now, the penguin does come with a gun piece, which is that one, and the new stud shooter with an added hilt from the monkey kit theme, but in black, attached to the back, making it look like a bazooka of some sort, like a RPG or a rocket launcher. I think it looks really good. It looks, it's pretty cool. So overall, this is a pretty good figure, in my opinion. Um, unlike the Batman, which I'll get to now. Now the second and last figure we have is none other than Batman played by Robert Pattinson himself. Now this figure is a bit of a hit and miss for me. There are honestly two pros to this mythic and a lot more cons. First pro is that the printing on this figure is really detailed and I love it. Where Lego really nailed it with the armor printing, with the Bat logo on the chest and how they included that little silver bit over there um, to make the logo really stand out. The utility belt is, with the gadgets is also really well done, and the same level of detail on the front continues on to the back. As you can see, LEGO did not skim at all on the details on the back, and there's an equal amount of detail on the back as there is on the front. So printing really is a 10 out of 10 um, in that department. The second good thing about this minifigure is that it comes with another hit and separate hairpiece, uh, which is this one, to sort of represent Bruce Wayne, yeah, Bruce Wayne or the Drifter, I guess. I love this combination of the headpiece and the hairpiece. I think it looks really good and it does represent uh, Robert Pattinson really well. I'll just quickly switch out the heads here for you guys to see, just to see how good it really looks. I really like that. I think it looks really cool, really Robert Pattinson-like. Yeah, but that's about all the good things with this minifigure, honestly. Moving on to the cons, the most obvious one and one which I'm sure everyone shares the same opinion is the cow. This older cow piece for Batman just does not do it for Robert Pattinson's Batman, especially when his car does not have a chin strap, uh, the bit on the bottom there. The newer cow uh, is clearly the way to go here, so I'm not sure why Lego even bought it with the older cow in the first place. And I have that cow here just to switch and just to show you guys what it would look like. I think that looks a lot better compared to using the old cow. This is clearly the one to go because, you know, there's no chin strap and Robert Bat Pattinson's Batman doesn't have a chin strap, or at least from what we've seen so far. Next, with the torso and arms having been printed in grey, LEGO should have given this figure uh, dual molded legs. The, black, the current black legs with grey printed on the front doesn't look too good for me. Uh, it looks off, especially when viewed from the side. You can see the, the color contrast there with the grey and the black legs. And lastly, in my opinion, which is honestly quite a minor thing, uh, this figure could have done with some arm printing. Uh, just to add that level of detail uh, of the gauntlet that he wears based on what we've seen so far. 
Lego has clearly done a really detailed arm printing before with the Spider-Man figures. I'm sure they could have done the same thing for Batman here. Uh, otherwise, black arms would have been better looking as well. So overall, it can be a decent figure if you're not that nitpicky with the cons I just mentioned. But for me, there is definitely room for improvement for this figure, and particularly when LEGO releases a ton of Batman sets every year. So they have plenty of opportunity to, to work on each Batman figure. Now moving on to the build itself, as I have already hinted to at the beginning of the video, I am slightly disappointed with how the Batmobile turned out, um, especially after the amazing tumble that we got back in November. And if you haven't already, be sure to check, that, check my review of that one in my channel. I'll link it down in the description below. Essentially, this is a souped-up vintage Dodge Charger, right? There's no denying that. I think everyone feels the same way, therefore it may not seem like a Batmobile, which is understandable because this is supposed to be the uh, early years of Batman being a detective, etc. But that's not the issue for me. The main issue I have is the scale of this Batmobile and the overall dimensions uh, based on what we've seen so far. Now, based on the images that we've gotten, Robert Pattinson's Batman, uh, Batmobile sorry, is a lot more flat, it's a lot more wide, and a lot more low compared to how it looks right now um, in this build. Now, I'll bring up the images on screen uh, just as a, as a comparison. Uh, you can see how the build here is pretty narrow. Uh, it's pretty narrow here. Uh, it's a lot longer than it should be, bringing us to the issue of scaling. As it is now, it isn't scaled very well to, the, to a minifigure, uh, unlike the Bat Tumber which is the main issue I have with this Batmobile. Now, moving on to the build process itself, I will say that I didn't quite enjoy building this one as I did with the Bat Tumbler. Uh, there was a surprising number of one by one pieces used uh, overall in the build, which I didn't quite enjoy, I didn't like at all. Now, the best part, of course, is the built up engine on the back, as you can see here. This looks absolutely amazing. A lot of detail was clearly put into making this look like a modified engine for the Batmobile, so I really like it. I love how it looks. I just wish they did more, uh, I'm not sorry, not do more, but use more of these chrome silver pieces like this one over here um, for the other parts of the engine just to really make it stand out, you know. Um, they, could, they could have used it for these two pipes over here. Pipes or exhaust pieces, I'm not too sure. Uh, or even these one, all these six pieces here, you know, just make everything look chrome and really make it stand out. Yeah. You do get uh, one pieces, this one over here and this one over here. That's the Harry Potter one pieces. And you do get two stickers on the bottom there, over there on those cheese slope pieces. I definitely thought they could have shortened the back of the back end of the car, uh, but I guess it is at this length now because of the built up engine. I'm sure it takes up quite a bit of space, uh, which is why it looks like that now. now. You do have two red stickers on the back. Oops, sorry. Two red stickers on the back here to represent the backlight of the car. And if you look just past the engine over there, you can see a little hint of the transparent red piece that's made in the interior. Now the sides of the car and the, where the doors are are completely flat, completely flat and uh, comprised of the curve and cheese slope pieces here, well, mostly here and all these, all these bits here. Uh, however, there are a couple of studs near the back end here, which I thought Lego could have completed them, you know, just to make it uh, with just to make it more streamlined with more slope pieces or cheese slope pieces. Uh, that bit of sticker over there, completely unnecessary. I don't know why they put that in at all. It doesn't really do anything or add any level of detail uh, to the Batmobile. Now on the top, you have the roof, which can be easily detached as I did just now. It just came off accidentally and put back quite easily. It's really just helped by two studs um, on the front there where it usually is. And that is a sticker as well. Again, another one which I thought was unnecessary. But you know, sticker, it's Lego. So looking at the interior, you have the steering wheel. There's the steering wheel over there. If I can just get that to focus. There we go, that's better. Uh, the steering wheel on the left side connected with a T-piece, which I'm not too sure why. I could be, it could be the gear shift, you know, those old school gear shifts that's mounted on the dashboard itself. Uh, you have the stickers to represent uh, the dashboard of the car and a console in the middle over there, which I thought was really cool, a really cool detail. And you have more slow pieces sort of to represent the seats of the car. 
not very did not very detailed but not too plain either i think it's just a good amount and then you do have these little spaces on top here i guess just to add you know, just to you know keep or place the batarangs when you're when you're having batman in the car itself now moving on to the front you have quite a number of pieces used to build up the hood uh, it's a good length however and again i wish they made it just a little bit wider uh, to make it resemble more like the actual batmobile uh, as it is now, it's not too bad, but not, not great either. And one other thing I found odd was how these how this 2x2 two two piece, this one here, uh, which has another sticker on top there, was incorporated onto the hood. Uh, it just sort of, it just sits on this you know, one of uh, these round orange stud pieces over there, as you can see, uh, which was pretty odd for me. And viewing from the top, you can see a bit of the... I'm having trouble putting those in. Uh, on the top, you can sort of see if I can get like the focus, a bit of orange bit in there on the inside. And these two are actually the triggers uh, to release the spring-loaded missiles that are on the front of the bat. Sorry, the roof is just being really annoying right now. Uh, as I was saying, the sorry, the triggers for the spring-loaded piece uh, missiles that are on the front of the Batmobile over there. Uh, what you do is, is you just press on them. And they just go flying, and they're actually pretty strong. Yeah, it flew really far away. Uh, uh, so on the hood as well, you can has you you have these two pipes of valves, uh, whatever they're called. I'm not too sure. I'm not a, really a, a car enthusiast. Spotting out these blue flames, which also appear on the sides near the tires over there, that one over there, and one over there, and they're sort of angled outwards to sort of give like the the nitro boost effect, I guess. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of these flame pieces. They didn't utilize them at all for the Bat Tumbler. I didn't think it was necessary for this Batmobile. Uh, these flame pieces also appear on the back of the car, uh, where the engine's supposed to be, this one over here, uh, possibly to represent like the, a nitro boost effect of some sort, you know. But back to the front, you can see that we have one by one transparent square pieces to represent the light. There are the, uh, these four over there. If I can just get these to focus. That's better. Uh, you can see a bit more of the orange bit just right on top of where the missiles are kept. And you have three stickers to complete the front look, which is one, two, and three. These are not too bad. And last but not least, the other thing I didn't like with this build are these uh, sort of semicircle one by one pieces used to complete the tires. I don't like how they look. I don't like how if you play with this enough, they are most probably not gonna align with each other like, look at that right now. It's clearly not a with each other. I don't like this at all. Um, if anything, they could have used um, this round piece, actually. This round piece on the back where it was used in the engine, the back of the engine to complete the engine, uh, just to fix the tires, just to complete the tires, like that. Honestly, I think that looks a lot better. If they included, like, four pieces of that, I would have just replaced all these semicircle bits with these ones just to make the Batmobile look so much better. So overall guys, I would not have minded if LEGO reduced the size of the Batmobile, make it more accurate to the one we will be seeing on screen soon, and maybe have a separate car built for the Penguin. As we've seen from the trailer, this is possibly from that scene where the Batman in his Batmobile is chasing after Penguin uh, in, his car, in his own car with all the explosions happening and the Penguin saying, I've got you and all that. Uh, so the, the Batmobile build definitely needed to be shorter, uh, make it more flat and more wide to make it more accurate to the source material. It is somewhat detailed, but at the same time, not as detailed as I had hoped it would be. But then again, this is understood as it's just a modified Dodge Charger and not a more advanced, fancy vehicle like the Bat Tumber that we've seen. Minifigure selection is pretty good. Uh, we do get one exclusive minifigure with this set, which is a Penguin. It's a good one in terms of design and detailing. However, the Batman is too common as it appears in all three sets of the way. For the price of $139.99 though, unfortunately, I would not have gotten this set. Uh, for that price point for a slightly modified car may seem a little high for some people, but since I did get it for 115 ringgit only, it's a much better, uh, much better price point for me. It might be more worth it for me. But anyway, let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments down below. Are you planning on getting this set for yourself? Have you already gotten it? Are you looking forward to that Batman movie? Let me know. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and maybe think about subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!